Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> it's recording. It's recording. So, rites of, right, little, little, rites of passage for the boys, and why are we doing this, right? Um, my belief is that along the way, the basic guidance, discipline, principles have been lost amongst our young, young men specifically. And I got one brother on the, um, on the screen who can attest that a lot of times we're having a lot of young men that are being raised by single moms, right? So the difference between today and years ago was you always had someone, whether it was uncles, cousins, grandfather, who would instill some of the things that they learned and passed it on. And I believe that, um, you know, the difficulty now is we don't have enough young men with the proper guidance and direction or how to maintain or live a purpose driven life. So with that, we're looking to, you know, come up with a core set of principles, goals and objectives that is easily attainable and measurable to help motivate them along the way to, um, for the healthy outcome. So coming together, it was just something we were brainstorming on what could we do? How could we help the community? How could we help the boys? Because Sister Shimora does something for the little girls already. So what are we going to do for the boys? I mean, you know, at times um, with all the gang affiliations and everything else, we just have so many young boys that are lost. So to me, I think that's um, one of the reasons on why we wanted to get together and come together so that we could, um, you know, strive for a positive um, outcome. So in doing that, let me add this too, because we do have um, brother Tell Tellum? Telly. Telly, right? So we have you, we have Hakeem, and we got to get together too, because we have some things that are outlined and if there's anything that you can think about that you might feel is missing or something that you feel is, um, you know, needs to be added, by all means, interject. Because like I said, this is a community-based driven thing. It's not, this ain't our thing. I mean, it's not our thing, it's our thing. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, we're just trying to, you know, pull from each other's strengths, whatever they may be, and incorporate them into the, uh, to the young men. So. You know, that's, that's what I wanted to add. Yeah. And um, I also want to emphasize too, like that the rites of passage is, it's more than just a responsibility of the parents, it's a community thing. So even though children may have their mother and their father and have extended family, you still have to bring together, you know, the rites of, what the rites of passage does is it, it really is the village coming together to make sure, you know, that this child has the tools that they need to go on to the next phase of life. And I feel like that's really beyond just the parents. The parents are integral and so important to that, but it's, um, you know, it, it's the parents plus the community coming together to help push that young man together or forward. And um, so it's not something you could, it's hard to really do a rites of passage when it's just like you and your son by yourself, you know, but rites of passage are meant to be done with the group of men coming together and putting the boys through it. So we're really trying to facilitate like that group of men coming together to do that for the boys. And that's backing that up. Okay, I had to take you Okay, I said you can only teach yourself what you already know, meaning the more, you know, the more people, the more help, the more people, the more knowledge, you know, so if you, if you have 10 people, you may have 500 years of experience as opposed to just 50 years of experience, you know what I mean? So in, in that aspect, you're definitely um, right. So we're just open. Hey. Um, Hakeem is texting me. He said he, huh? I said Hakeem just texted me. He said he can't hear anything. I'm texting him. Oh, okay.
Okay. So I guess I can um, share what we have what we have outlined for group one and group two. Uh, maybe before I do that, we can say what how old are um, I have two sons um, for each group. So I have one son that's in that star phase, which is the younger group, which is like seven to twelve. Um, and that's him right here, Amir. And then I have another yeah, son. <laughs> um, and Amir is about to be 10 this month, actually. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have another son, Shuaib, who is 13. So he would be in that group two, which is age 13, I believe, to 17 is what we outlined for that one. And that's flexible, too. Those aren't strict brackets. Um, but, yeah, he's in that 13. So, um we really we weren't sure if we we're going to do these two groups simultaneously at the same time or if we will do like one group and stagger it and then do group two or do group two and then do group one but it also really depends on if the majority of our parents have children that are fit within that first age group then we'll do that and if the majority are in that second age group we'll do that and if we have both 50 50 we'll do that so we're kind of just pacing it according to like what the need is and what what's out there so at this moment i like to ask everybody what age their what group their sons what age their sons are and what group their sons fit into because i have both group one and group two my son is uh, son is uh 14 so he fits in group two So I have um, two sons as well. I have um, one that's not appropriate at all. <laughs> He's a two-year-old. <laughs> Three-year-old, what am I doing? And then I have, I'm gonna say a 13-year-old. <laughs> so you're group two. <laughs> okay, 13-year-old at group two. Okay, And how do you spell your name? Ola BC, O-L-A. B I S I. And you said age. And my son's name name is Kanai, and he's thirteen. Okay, got it. All right. Bow, he's still muted over there. Bow. Uh. Haley, you want to go? Um, yeah, so we have home here um, the seven year old, about to be eight year old. So that's group one. And um, the others are probably not appropriate. <laughs> right. Two grown and one baby. That's two. Val, can you tell us what age group your son would fit into? Hi. Um, I have two 14 year old twins. So I have two for group two, and then I have a nine year old for group one. Nice, yay. <laughs> and do you want their names? Please. Okay, so the twins are Samir and Tamir, and it's spelled S-A-H-M-I-R and T-A-H-M-I-R. They're the 14 year olds. And then Imari is I am like Mary, A R E E. Mm, I like how you spell that. <laughs> His mom spelled it that way. I am their grandmother and I adopted them. Okay. Um, Imari just turned nine. He had his birthday was um, March 1st, I mean, um, April 1st. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I said the 30th, I mean, and the 1st, and got another one coming up. Yeah. Amir, when's your birthday? Amir, when's your birthday? April 2nd. April 16th. April, April 16th. Oh, okay. That's a week before mine. I'm April 23rd. <laughs> Bye. We got to have a virtual party for you. Yeah, you know, I'm probably going to be two-stepping. I'm gonna get my man to come over there. We gotta bring him in there too. <laughs> All right. So it looks like uh, we have five in group two and we have three in group one. So it looks like we're kind of straddling both groups here. 
but definitely more heavy on group two. Okay. And more to be, so, okay. So I guess at this point we have uh, COVID-19 going on and that kind of has put like a delay in things that we were planning. So that's obvious. Um, we still want to do an open house meeting. I think we're hoping, or at least to move forward to just, we're thinking um, right quickly that we would just do the reading list over the summer and, um, and then really start things in the fall since uh, depending on how things go with this delay. Um, so it's kind of like where we was thinking we were going to lunch and really lift off um, to start it for the summer. Now we're thinking we might do like a pre-program that will basically segue into the lunch in the fall. That's what we're thinking now because things are very unpredictable at this point. Yeah, so, the other thing that we thought about is, you know, potentially working on some fundraising. And so yeah, we yeah. are ready to kick off. We have some resources and some means to be able to, you know, enroll in different courses, to be able to purchase some of the supplies that we're thinking and the convenings that we want to do. Because um, one thing that we haven't really discussed this, just that the home base of this will be here in Durham, North Carolina, but we have folks who are in other areas and wanting to bring them in and make sure that they could participate. Um, so I think the time that we're allowed now will help us figure a lot of that out and also, you know, get the group coalesced around what they're going to be doing when we're ready to launch, hopefully in the fall. So that's kind of a bit of a, a timeline. And I'm going to go ahead and screen share and show our um, the outline that we have for group one and group two. So I guess um, I'll start with group one. So I'm going to the screen share. Let's see if I have, okay, no. All right. Um, okay, you guys can see this? Okay, great. So right here is group one, which we call the star phase. Um, before this is the energy phase. There's a, every set, according to African tradition, especially when I'm raised in with part of my family being from Senegal, but generally in African tradition, a rite of passage is every seven years. So we really have this outline in seven year increments. But that, those, like I said, those brackets are flexible. Like you may have someone who, a child, who is six years old, but ready to go into the star phase. You know, he may not be seven, and you may have a child that's, you know, 11, you know, or 12, but ready to go into the crescent phase, which is group two. So those brackets are kind of flexible depending on the maturity of the child too, and the development of the child with all being taken into consideration. So this is the Boys' Rights of Passage program. And again, this is a flexible outline. You guys are, um, we really want you guys input um, anything that you have questions about, anything that you feel like should be added or that you feel like should be taken away, we want to hear about it. Um, and also, if there's any like um, skills that you guys have where you could facilitate any of um, these um, part of this outline, we would like that too. So I'll start off. This is um, the theme of this phase is competence and method. Um, so becoming, so the goals and challenges uh, would be responsibility. So if you think about your son, when he turns age six and seven, it's like he comes out of that baby phase. When you turn six or seven, you're not a baby anymore. You're starting to do more things for yourself. And that's really what this, what this phase is about, is you becoming responsible for certain things in the household and um, for yourself and your own safety and well-being um, in that sense. So responsibility, and then also coming out of that baby phase, social skills. So starting to see things more than just from your own perspective. Uh, if you think about where a baby is before the age of six, where a child is, that it's more like, you know, me, me, you know, it's more, they're more aware of just their own needs, but then they start to see things from others perspective and be considerate and compassionate of that as they, um, get into the age six or seven. And then also knowing how to deal with things like conflict or if they're playing a game and playing with somebody, you know, how do you, you know, share, how do you take turns, all this kind of thing is part of that natural development. So this is things that we're targeting here. So, um, responsibility, social skills, establishing a peer group, um, 
in, in the energy phase, which is the phase before this, the group before this, we don't um, require them to necessarily be in a group where they're doing these classes within a group structure. At this point, things are in a group. So um, establishing a peer group and that peer group, the ideal is that that peer group will stick with them into for the rest of their life. Like they will always build a call these people, these young, bo the boys that they go through this with, they will always, you know, be in contact with them or be able to, you know, call them and be like, hey, you know, and they'll always be a resource to each other. So this is something that goes beyond just this period of time, but hopefully bonds that are created, you know, that they'll be friends, you know, for the rest, you know, rest of their lives, you know, willing. Okay, so um, establishing a peer group, um, the concept of Ubuntu, which is I am because you are, so that connectedness with not just with within your family, but then with your friends and with your community. Industry and agriculture are huge. Uh, so like, what are you able to do? You know, what are you able to do for yourself? What are you able to do within your household? Um, inventiveness, um, coming up with ideals and things that improve things that already exist or to help things within your life and your household. Coping with defeat, losing and be able to do that gracefully, I guess, or with uh, integrity, which can be very difficult at that age. We might feel like these things are very easy because we're adults now, but yeah. Um, initiative, which is not waiting for someone to tell you what to do, but knowing what to do in a situation and, and following through with it and being uh, trustworthy, responsible enough to do that. Self-direction, um, no right from wrong, establishing a moral compass, and that's, that's the beginning of that. Not that it'll already be done by the time you are at the end of this, but at least starting to. Um, and then also we like them to pick up some type of language. Uh, we have Arabic and Swahili down, um, just because they're pretty, um, as far as like African languages go, they're pretty universal. And, um, but we're open to others too, but Swahili is definitely a big one. And uh, sacrifice, the ideal of sacrifice, and concentration, focus, and then purpose, which is Nia, purpose, okay? So the totem that they will receive at the end of this um, program would be the appetite. And those are usually done as, as malas and are usually made by the father or somebody within the community to be gifted to him upon the completion of his rites of passage. Um, again, this is ages six through 12. I have 13 up here, but you know, we don't, those are fluid. So six through 12, here, honey, it's hurting my leg. I'm like, here, you can sit here. Here, get right here. Um, price and scope is to be determined because like I said, we were hoping that we can fundraise for most of this or either have um, donations and we're working for that. Um, but then also there, there may be some, what prices are there or whatever. Like if someone has to be over the, um, like there may be fees as far as gardening. When we do the gardening, if we need fees to cover like equipment or seed, buying seeds and things like that or renting a tiller or something like that. Or um, for example, for like drumming class or for whoever wants to be over, um, you know, the business, when they go through the business part or something like that, if they have a fee, then we have to see about what that fee would be and um, how we can cover that cost of that. So that's where cost comes in if there is to be any cost. So like I said, as we assign people to these different bullet points, then the cost is, um, then the cost is put there. And then as we fundraise, that cost can decrease. Okay, so that's how we're doing that. And we can, that will be more clear as time goes on. Um, so I have the first three things um, in a different color because they're optional. This is, I realize for some people, um, you know, some people may not be okay with a birth chart or having an incarnation reading, um, depending on what the family's uh, spiritual beliefs are and everything. And we're totally okay with that either way. And so that's why we put it as optional. But we think that it's important because it helps to give some um, ideal of like the purpose, your pur your life purpose, your your um, the gifts that you may have been born into into this world with already, and how we can best support those, which your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, depending on um, what sign you're born under and things like that. So these are things that we, um, we have people, we'll have people designated for and are available. Um, and usually they're done, I mean, I know like in my family personally, those are done when a child is born. 
but that's different for everybody. Some people may not have theirs done yet. So that's why we have it up there as an option. So any questions, I guess, about that? All right, so yeah, birth chart, astrological reading, incarnation reading, optional. Moving along, uh, we have drumming class, um, chess class, and again, re remember this is age six to 12, um, gardening, agriculture, building a greenhouse, um, debate, which is very important for communication, being able to communicate your point across or in whatever it is that you're, you want to, job shadowing, uh, we want the boys to have an, an invention fair. Um, we want them to do a community service project, either together or separately. Uh, we would like to have a field day with them uh, where they do different um, races and competitions and things like that, which would be good for their peer group and bonding. Uh, camping, we feel like a connection to nature is very essential in the boys' rites of passage. Fabric manipulation. So that could be anything from learning like nautical knots or knot tying, different types of knots to sewing, knitting, crochet, net making, weaving, dyeing of fabric, all of that. But whatever he chooses, what he chooses to do. Um, African history, figures and periods, Constitution of the United States, uh, and then uh, character development. So, and we're going to be targeting bullying, health and hygiene. Uh, we would like them to do like an intro to Kabaweta and get a somewhat of a, 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 a basic foundation in that, which is like an African African martial arts. And I know there's a Kabaweta group that I've been in contact with on and off here in Durham. So I'm going to contact them about that. And, um, and I also um, know that, um, just to put it out there, that, uh, for example, Brother Telly, Baba Telly, he does drumming. So I would like to definitely speak with him on that. Um, so I'm just thinking of people, you know, who could facilitate different things as we're moving along and we've been doing that. Uh, so then we have character development. We did that into a recitation of an ancient, ancient mantra, prayer or affirmation. Um, again, we want this to be universal. This is for people from all different uh, spiritual beliefs and, and paths, different paths. So it would be something that's universal that we would have them memorize that they could recite separately or together um so yeah we haven't decided exactly with that we have a lot of ideals but we haven't decided exactly what that mantra or affirmation would be but yes we want them to do that and then the final totem which i said before that they will receive at their final ceremony which will be an appetite an appetite and if you ever look up appetite the attributes um the appetite supports are all like in accordance with the theme that we have here for this for this group for this group one so that would be made into a mala or like a thicker or like what would be considered like a thicker or a rosary, like a mala beads necklace um, for the boys. And it would be like a lay, like we would lay them with it after final ceremony. And usually the father is the one that um, gives, gives it to the boy and, and puts it on him at his final ceremony. And, and usually the father is the one that makes it too. Um, so, and then, um, and, and then the last one here says other candidate responsibilities which would be job shadowing, demonstrating a skill or trade, working on an invention, um, independently performs three domestic chores proficiently within their home, and final ceremony dress. So, okay, so the final ceremony dress is something that we usually get together with the parents and decide, because um, in the past that my husband and I have done these, it could be anything from, um, you know, a white Oxford shirt and slacks or an African outfit. Um, we usually, uh, or either it could be like a, what you call a sash, you know, or, you know, sometimes they do like the bow ties or the ties with the African print. We decide what we want. I guess we would get together and decide what we want the, the final ceremony dress to be for the boys. And there's a lot of variety um, for that. And, and sometimes we get with a seamstress and have them make them. And then sometimes it's something basic that parents can just go out and, and buy or make themselves. So we decide on that together. And also when we do the final ceremony, um, this is usually, okay. So this is usually a six month period. Just so you guys understand that all this is done over a six month period. And each month, the boys will get together probably once or twice a month, okay? And so each month, it'll be, each one of these will be out, they'll do a class together where one of these, things in the numbers, one of these bullet points are um, highlighted. So for example, say in um, August, they would get together 
and um, they would do um, a class on debate and they would come up with a debate topic and then at the second meeting they would actually do the do a debate you know um, and then then say in September they would get together again and that one they would do chess and they would get together with a chess master and they would learn how to play chess and then on that second meeting they would actually play each other and others in chess and then on the next month which would be October they may do um, you know their invention uh, they may do their invention uh, fair where they share their inventions that they've been working on for the last couple of months then the next month they may do their Kabaweta class and then and then they'll do another class they get together with their Kabaweta teacher and then the next month could be drumming or drumming could be going on simultaneously you know on Saturdays in the background while the other things are going on. So that's kind of like the structure you can expect. The commitment is six months. Um, at the end of six months, they have the final ceremony. At the ceremony, they would do their um, recitation. They would um, do a demonstration of something that they worked on. And there will be a council of elders at that ceremony um, that would pretty much give their approval um and uh yes so i think that kind of gives you a visual and an idea of how we the commitment for this um how much interaction it will be the structure for it and uh, how long it yeah how long that is so that's group one so before we go to group two um allow has a question that so, might be helpful for others so just um looking at the outline right um and we have some who don't live in the state. So would some of these um, goals that we have outlined be attainable maybe online or be able to be shared online? Because of course we want them to be able to come. They may be able to come three times in the six months, but they, they may not be able to come for every meeting. So 